Hey folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and we've got a very Canadian knife today. This is a knife that's actually only available at Canadian Tire stores in Canada. Uh, Canadian Tire is a store that is, <laughs> it's an older store in Canada. It's been around for a lot, a, long, a very long time, way over 100 years. And uh, they set, started off as sort of an, a mechanics kind of store, auto mechanic. And they've expanded and they've got all kinds of stuff now, including a lot of sporting equipment and including knives. And they've even got their own brands. Hunt Shield is their... <laughs> Be very careful how you interpret this word. This is their higher end brand. And then they've got Outbound, which is even cheaper. And they've got a couple other brands that are even cheaper. But Hunt Shield is not a high-end brand at all. This is a budget knife, to say the least. The regular price for this knife is $49.99 Canadian. In American dollars, I guess that's probably the high 30s somewhere. So not a lot of money. comes with this uh, Cordura-esque or style-type sheath. It's actually fairly well made. A good snap to hold it. Great big belt loop right here. We'll look at that in a little more detail. We've got uh, a 420 steel blade, uh, and that's it. It just says 420. It doesn't say if it's J2 or HC. I bet you it's just a basic 420 steel. And um, it's got one of those rat tail tangs. I'm not sure exactly how far it goes. I'm sure it goes all the way to the end, and this tip end has been uh, welded on or somehow attached on the end, and a leather uh, ring handle. So a nice uh, bolster guard up here, and uh, you know it's a good weight, kind of almost a Bowie style blade, except for it's just a very very slight clip point, very very slight. Uh, so still in the Bowie esque kind of style. So if you want to hear about this, and you might want to because tomorrow, August the third, uh, October the third, tomorrow October the third, this goes on sale for $20, $19.99 for at least one week. Uh, so if you want to get this, maybe as a gift for somebody for Christmas, it is October already. Uh, this could be, well, watch the rest of the review and you decide for yourself if you want to get one of these in the next week or so. They've got a couple other knives that were on sale, are on sale while I'm recording this and will be on different ones on sale next week and I'll get a few more Canadian Tire knives uh, to review. After all, I am Canadian cutting edge, and so I like to show some knives that are from Canada. So if you're from outside of Canada and you want one of these, contact me by email at canadiancuttingedge at gmail.com, and I might be able to arrange purchasing one for you and shipping it to you. And of course, I'm going to want to make a few dollars off the deal, but I don't want to, I'm not trying to get rich off of it, but it's not going to cost me anything to do this. Uh, but if you want one, uh, maybe I can arrange to get one for you and ship it to you. But for now, let's get this thing resituated onto our tabletop, and we're going to take a good close look at this knife coming at you right now. And here's a little look at part of the packaging that it comes in. It comes. Uh, this is the paper that's inside that uh, clamshell plastic kind of sheathing. And so that's what it says. Hunt Shield Whitetail BAK Survival Knife is what they're calling it. And uh, if we look on the back here, same name, there is the Canadian Tire part number 1759423-4. And uh, don't believe everything you read in advertising. And uh, here we go. Here's the information on it. If we can get this to focus here. There we go. It says blade material, 420 stainless steel, uh, blade thickness, 4.8, drop point, they're calling it 8-inch blade, and a leather handle material. And uh, there is the uh, UPC code or some more information for it. Yes, it said made in China. It's most definitely a made in China knife. Let's get this to focus back where we want it to be. Here is the... Uh, sheath system uh, that's some kind of plastic it's fairly durable they put a spacer in here um, and it's you know it's a good fabric sheath a nice snap there and uh, the knife fits in there quite well and the snap goes on here so it's a quiet sheath you know there's a little bit of noise of movement if you're shaking it hard 
But if you're just walking around, this thing's not going to make noise. Uh, it fits into a lot of different belts <laughs> if you want to hang it from something. And uh, it's a decent sheath system, especially if you're going to get it on sale for $20. In that case, that's a very good system. Here, let me turn my lights on. There we go. I think that's better, isn't it? That, that's, that's better, yep. So refocus this thing. There we go. So what we have is uh, the handle actually comes up a little bit. Uh, uh, if you think there's a main line through here, it actually rises up a little bit, and then the clip point comes down a little bit. A bit of a swedge right there. And uh, let's see if we get this focused again right up here. There you go. So you can see that swedge right there. And the thickness of the blade, it's very thick right up to the tip, or fairly thick, I should say. And then we've got a hollow grind, really nice belly there, and then a long straight section. Good sharpener's toil built in. And here's the bolster and some layers of uh, leather. You know, that ring style leather that slides up over a rat tail. And then it comes to the end and metal back here. Notice there's no lanyard hole. And that brings me to my first con. Uh, the handle's thickest right here in the middle, and it's actually widest right here in the middle. So you can see the shape of it, narrow, wide, narrow. So if it's getting smaller at the handle end, the pommel end, if you will, and there's no lanyard hole, that's not a good system. It's The knife's going to want to travel out of your hand if you start doing some chopping for a while. And without a lanyard hole there, uh, there's no way to wrap a lanyard around your hand to as a safety feature to stop your knife from coming out of your hand. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that. I would prefer if the handle, I don't use lanyards that often, but when the handle's getting smaller, it's really necessary to at least put a lanyard hole in here. Now you could put one in yourself. You could drill it. And uh, I'm just not sure if I'd want to. I don't know how thick the rat tail is down here. And if you drill a hole that's a little bit too big, you might make that weak on the end and it could break off. So you'd want to drill a fairly small hole, you know, and then use paracord, you know, that you can just barely feed in there if you're going to do it. That's what I would suggest. Uh, it, there's a little bit of a... Uh, that's decorative, you know, that, that's, that's, what's the name of that again? It's not a blood groove. People call them blood grooves all the time. Um, I fell down today and I hit my head and um, I don't think I lost consciousness, but ever since then I've had a really bad headache and my brain's just not working quite right. Yes, I'll get it looked into. I'll, I do take care of myself. Fuller, see, just talking for a while and it came back. So it's got a little bit of a fuller type kind of milling done right there. That's just for uh, decorative interest. There's no real reason for that. It's not enough to make the knife any lighter or not significantly at all. So we've got a decent knife here. Let's go over all of the dimensions, the sizes, and that kind of information. When I'm done with that, I'll take this away. If you're looking carefully, uh, you'll see that the edge here is slightly different than it was before, and that's because... Uh, I went to do my editing of my video and I realized that the audio was totally shot for this next section and I had already started sharpening this knife. I usually don't sharpen them until after I've done the review. So it looks a little bit differently now, but be that as it may, let's go over the dimensions. The cutting edge, 20.2 centimeters, which is 7.93 inches. The blade length, so tip to the first close edge on the bolster across the spine here, 21.1 centimeters, 8.31 inches. The uh, blade thickness, 4.8 millimeters, which is 0.189. That's about uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. The blade depth, it's biggest right here. That is 4.21 centimeters, 1.66 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, and it's about in the middle of where this fuller is, is where I measured it. 1.05 millimeters, which is 0 0.041 inches, so it's fairly thick behind the grind, but not bad for this size knife and for this steel, uh, which is 420 stainless steel, by the way, which is a decent steel. It's a little bit soft, Rockwell hardness of around a 50, 
soft compared to a lot of modern steels, but for what this knife is, it's not that bad, especially at $20 on sale. 20 Canadian dollars, which is around 15 US dollars on sale. Uh, but it's only available in Canada at Canadian tire stores, of course. Uh, the grind angle on this side that it says hunt shield, 19.1 degrees. On this side, 17.8 degrees. That's a little too shallow. Uh, I'm going to resharpen this knife, and I started resharpening this knife at 22.5 degrees per side, which gives an equivalent of uh, 45 degrees uh, inclusive. Uh, a little too shallow means that this edge is going to be a little too weak at only a Rockwell hardness of 50. It's going to bend and flex and twist and maybe crack and chip. I don't know. I don't think so. But, you know, it'll move a little bit if it's too shallow, uh, being less than 20 degrees per side. I prefer it to be a little bit uh, steeper, a little bit more hatchet-like, if you will, for this style knife. Um, so now let's go into the handle. The handle length is 12.4 centimeters, which is 4.89 inches. Uh, the handle thickness right here at the middle of the handle is where it's biggest. And that is 2.85 centimeters, which is 1.12 inches. The handle depth is biggest right there because the swell comes big and goes small uh, on this dimension as well. That is 3.58 centimeters, which is 1.41 inches. So it's a little bit bigger than a lot of handles. For a knife this size, I, I still find it proportionally it looks great, but I think it's a little too big for the average knife user. My hands are between large and extra large, and I'm finding the handle just a little bit too big. I'd like my fingertips to touch the palm of my hand when I wrap around. So it is for a big-handed user. If you've got extra large hands, this is awesome for you, if you're a man especially. Large hands will do pretty good on this, but people with men with medium and smaller hands, is, hands is, this might be too small for you guys. Uh, let's keep going on the dimensions. The uh, grip length here, it's uh, around 11.3 centimeters, 4.45 inches. The total length of this knife from the uh, pommel to the tip, 33.35 centimeters, which is 12.13 inches. And uh, the factory sh cutting edge, 155, which is actually very sharp for this knife. I was surprised from Hunt Shield for it to be that sharp. That's great. Uh, the weight of this knife is 362 grams, 12.8 ounces. So basically just over three quarters of a pound. And when you add the sheath, it's just over a pound, 462 grams, 16.3 ounces. So it is a big chunky, hunky kind of knife. I like the knife. Uh, like I said, the big con for me is I wish there was a lanyard hole. If they don't change the design at all, they should at least add a lanyard hole. And uh, I might try to add one myself. Um, I'm totally happy to sell this knife. If one of you guys wants it, just email me. Like I, I gave you the address before. Um, it's good guard here. I really like that. Very good work. I showed you the close-ups of uh, the guard with the steel and then the three layers of the black and then white and then black and um, or is that black and the steel? Yeah, it's black and then some steel and then black again and then leather and then the same pattern at the end of the handle again. Very good guard. F fits the hand quite well. Uh, feels good in hand. Yes, it's a chunky knife. It is a little forward heavy, which is good for a little bit of a chopping action. Uh, the sheath is reasonable for the price. You know, it's a well-made sheath and uh, decently designed. Of course, you can make your own Kydex or leather sheath if you want to, uh, if you want to do that for a budget knife like this. Um, 420, very corrosion resistant. That's a good thing. The shape is a good compromise for a survival knife. Survival knives are always compromise um, because, you know, it has to try to perform a lot of different kinds of tasks. Everything from defense to skinning an animal to uh, food prep. Uh, and all kinds of stuff in between. Uh, and it sort of has to compromise to do decently at all of those. And I think it does a pretty good job of that. With, with this steel, this hollow grind here is very good. If if we had a harder steel, like uh, even an 8CR13 MOV, we could have a little bit of a higher grind so that it'd be thin behind the edge uh, a little bit more. You know, too thin and it becomes a weak point, which is why... They did it this much. There's not much of a weak point here at all, especially with how thick they made it behind the grind. So it's a sturdy, sturdy knife. Um, the cons, like I said, no lanyard. 
and um, you know, perhaps a harder steel would be better. Those are the two main things I would change if I could. Uh, the one I can change, the lanyard hole, probably I can change that, uh, but I can't change the steel on the blade. It's a reasonable knife. At $20, I'd recommend this thing all day long, no problem. At $50, probably not, but maybe it's $50 Canadian that we're talking again, which is, you know, $37 US or whatever. So it's a definitely a budget knife. So if you've got somebody in mind to get this for, either yourself or somebody else, if you like having high-end stuff or that other person's, you know, an avid hunter, out, avid outdoors person, this is probably not the best for them. But if they're just like the occasional camper outdoors kind of person guy who would like to have a bigger knife, this would be a great gift. Uh, you can sand this side up a little bit to clean that off a little bit. That's just from rubbing against uh, this Cordura during shipping. You know, a little fine sandpaper and you can clean up those marks that are right there to make it look more like this side. And then use just some, some oil on it if you have nothing else. But linseed oil, boiled linseed oil is really good uh, for, you know, coating over the leather if you do sand it a bit. It's a good looking knife. I like it. At the price, I recommend it all day long. The sheath, you know, decent. I like that it's got snaps instead of just Velcro. Well made, decent knife for, you know, a relatively decent price. So that's about all that I have to say about this knife. Remember, the sale starts October 3rd for a week, up to October 10th, I think, I guess, if I did my math right, <laughs> for a week. And um, if your stores run out, you know, they'll give you a rain check on it for that price. So there you go. There's a number of other knives that you could look up uh, that are on sale right now. And, um, you know, I, I generally don't buy knives from Canadian Tire unless they're on sale. <laughs> they do sales often enough that it's worth it. So there you go. Thanks for watching my little video. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm still having a lot of pain in my shoulder and arm, so I'm, I'm not typing a lot for replying to comments, but I read everything. If you do want me definitely to write back to you, then email me at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com, like I mentioned before. And remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. And by the way, if you're outside of Canada and you want to buy one of these, I'm Again, like I said before, I'm willing to help you out uh, and uh, help you get there.